and we're going to start. Um, so first, I'd like to thank you all um, for joining us this evening. Um, we um, are really pleased to see you for our evening talk with Gregory Page tonight. Uh, this is our fourth talk of our full term. It's actually the last talk this term, and actually um, this term will be ending next week. So um, we'll be progr programming new talks next year, and we'll be posting them to our website where you can also sign up for a mailing list. Um, you can also uh, keep up to date by following us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Um, Manhattan Graphics Center would like to thank the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs, the Sherman Foundation, the Pierre and Tanya Matisse Foundation, our members and our other donors and friends for making our artist talks possible. Um, Gregory Page, um, who's speaking tonight, uh, received his MFA from the University of Wisconsin at Madison in 1977. He is an associate's professor emeritus of print media and drawing in the Department of Art at Cornell University College of Architecture, Art and Planning. Page is the co-founder of the Inkshot Printmaking Center, Olive Branch Press in Ithaca, New York. He is a member of the Black Church Printmaking Studio in Dublin, Ireland. He has also produced prints at the Edinburgh Printmakers Studio in Edinburgh, Scotland. Page's prints explore horticultural documentation in the realm of taxonomy and identification, allowing the plants to reveal a true expression of themselves, reflecting science, location, biodiversity, and sustainability. Page has exhibited internationally, including the Central Academy of Art Museum, Beijing, China. Um, he Jiang Jing, I hope I pronounced that right, Art Museum, Shenzhen, China, and Gallery Ami Kanoko, Osaka, Japan. Um, recent exhibits include the solo shows A Journey Through Printmaking, International Printmaking Art Exhibition, Central Academy of Fine Arts Museum, Beijing, China in 2021, and Motifs from the Global Backyard Two, John Hertel Gallery, Cornell University College of Architecture, Art and Planning, Ithaca, New York in 2020. Um, also a group, the group exhibition 2020, Reflection to Gallery de la Ferme de Mosseau, Elmcourt, France. Page has worked in the permanent collections of the Brooklyn Museum of Art, the Museum of Far Fine Arts in Houston, the Museum of Fine Arts in San Francisco, the Mesa Museum of Art in Monroe, Louisiana, Georgia State University, Tennessee State University, and Savannah College of Art. In Page's statement about motifs from the global backyard, he states, my work includes lithographs, prints produced in the technique I discovered in 2020, 2002 and was first demonstrated in the Frontiers Printmaking Conference in 2008 at Illinois State University at Normal, Illinois. The works are plants from the natural, National Botanic Garden in Dublin, Ireland, the Cornell Botanic Gardens, several greenhouses in the Horticultural Department at Illinois State University, Normal, Illinois, the Royal Botanic Gardens in Edinburgh, Scotland, and are of different types of plants I've encountered. The prints from Edinburgh, Scotland were produced in the Edinburgh Printmakers Studio located in Edinburgh, Scotland. Those from Dublin, Ireland were produced at the Black Church Printmaking Studio in Dublin, Ireland. The work continues to be inspired by my initial source for my visits to Rome teaching in the Cornell Rome program at the College of Architecture, Art and Planning. Attracted to the architectural ornament motifs that I found to not only embellish the architecture, but also served as reference to cultural history and in some cases guidance for the populace. I would actively seek out architectural motifs that I found interesting in those of horticultural subjects. Motifs from my backyard emerge as a body of work investing horticultural specimens from my own location. Motifs from the global backyard continues this work incorporating more plants from broader locations. As an active gardener, I have several perennial and vegetable gardens at my home. My backyard serves as a place of research where I'm given the opportunity to collaborate with the plants growing there in an endless cycle of investigation, design, regeneration, and sustainability. I am interested in producing motif impressions, allowing the plants to render an accurate physical expression. Using lithographic drawing materials and printing, I am able to acquire a sensitive impression of these plants that I find a true collaboration in this ongoing project. The gardens in my backyard contain over 40 different perennial specimens. 
seven different vo varieties of hostas, five different varieties of trees, 11 different varieties of ornamental grasses, one cherry tree, one apple tree, raspberries, blackberries, elderberries, and five different types of bushes. Um, that sounds like we should visit you and eat your uh, raspberries. Um, anyway, uh, I want to let everyone know that um, you can type questions for Greg by clicking on the Q&A in the controls at the bottom of your screen. And after he does his presentation, um, we'll, we'll have like a Q&A session. Um, and now I am going to hand this over to Greg, who's going to do his presentation. And um, there we go. Well, thank you, Robin. And I'd like to also thank everyone from the Manhattan Graphics Center who made this possible. Um, I'm really honored to be here tonight. And I thank all of you who have shown up to um, be here for the for the talk. I'm going to go ahead and uh, share the screen and show you um, some of what I have to, to uh, show. Let's see, I have to, I think I have to bring up something. I'm gonna close this first and then bring up the other items. And then I'll share the screen here. Okay. This is a recent website that I have. And uh, let's see. This was just, this website was just created about a year ago, actually, when the pandemic uh, first began. I hope all of you all out there are staying safe as well and um, your families as well. I wanted to start with what you're seeing here at the beginning are images from those travels to Rome with the uh, students in the program. Uh, we would visit uh, quite a few places for, for the semester. I went in 1999 and in 2002, I think it was, or 2001. And we, everywhere that I would go, I would try to um, uh, take shots of the um, ornamental motifs that are on the different buildings that I encountered, churches, um, at the Forum, and a lot of different areas. Uh, a lot of these are, for, for example, this is from Ostia Antica. Um, this next one, um, it's from Verona. We have some from uh, others from Verona. This is from Sicily and Palermo. This is another one from Sicily. Um, Ravenna and uh, the Forum in Rome. This is another one from Rome. What Milan and this is from the um, Duomo there in, in Milan. And this is from Mantova. And this one was also from Mantova. So what I was intrigued with was what, what I was encountering in these was, was one, horticultural stories and all kinds of different elements that were going on. And I really, really enjoyed um, this total experience of uh, looking at this kind of um, ornamentation. And it stuck with me when I got back home. What I wanted to do was to try to do my own types of um, uh, let's say motifs or, or ornamental uh, images using horticulture and using plants. Um, so I had been doing a lot of work with uh, the Cornell, it was uh, the Cornell Botanic Gardens and doing a lot of uh, collaborations with various, all of the, the uh, uh, gardeners, uh, Todd Bittner, who's the national, he's the uh, director of the um, uh, natural areas there. And we would do projects with the students and produce portfolios. Some of those portfolios dealt with uh, things such as the erosion that were taking place in some of the natural areas. Some of them had to do with specific areas in the gardens like the herb garden and 
uh, other places like that. Here is a, a, a sort of the current images. And this is some of the projects. This is one titled Motifs from My Backyard, current images also. This was some one of the um, earlier prints. These were prints that were then collected. These were images of um, the plants that were all collected and then taken through the process that I used to produce these prints. Um, and I'll go through that a little bit uh, as well. These are others here. And let me, let me go back to this. Uh, I'll close this out and go back to that. So what I'm gonna show you from the architectural images, and then I'm gonna to go to, let's say this one, Maltese from my backyard, which is this set of images. So these were the earlier ones, 2008, and the size here is 22 or, or 30 by 38 rather. What I was trying to do here is collect plants from the Cornell Botanic Gardens mostly and my own gardens at home. And I started with that and trying to develop the procedure and the process and get much, much better at it. Um, later, what I wanted to do is actually begin to think about traveling other places to do the same thing. And that's where a lot of the other, uh, the, the idea of going to Scotland, going to Ireland, um, for example, my interest in fern images was something that I, I always wanted to uh, try to go other places that had interesting ferns and uh, utilize them as the imagery. Uh, the, one of the other projects here is, let's see, the next one was the, um, I'll, I'll do, let's see, the global backyard. So 2013, I went to Illinois State University at Normal Editions. Uh, the director there is Richard Finch and Vita Reeves is uh, assistant director. They invited me there to produce uh, prints and this came out of that demonstration that I did earlier on in the Frontiers in Printmaking. And they invited me back to actually do a, a set of prints with them. And um, I had a sabbatic that, that year and I decided to sort of try to pull together going to uh, Scotland as well. And these images were from Illinois State University. And I will show you actually some, I have another um, uh, PowerPoint that has some of the images from the actual creation of that, along with some images from uh, Scotland and from uh, Ireland too. But all of these plants were collected and the technique that I do is that I will dry them and soak them in paste tush or liquid tush. So I'll have, I like to call it a, a vat of tush ready to go. And I'll have all my, all my leaves um, soaked in the vat of tush. And I use Artex film to place them on. And from there, what I'll do is um, uh, let them dry. Once they dry, they attach to the film so much that they really get a wonderful impression of themselves. That whole idea of um, getting a sensitive impression, I, I felt that what, what I wanted the plants to do is to speak on their terms, opposed to me attempting to draw the plant. Uh, and my background in lithography and in printmaking in general has had a lot to do with sort of kind of trying to explore um, what materials in our processes can do and how you can really utilize it to uh, get some very interesting effects. Um, this print here uh, is actually, it's a, uh, let's click on that one. 
So it's one where you have uh, three different images going. So it creates another type of density and mystery in this kind of image. Um, and this is one from Scotland and it's um, ferns that are, are native to Edinburgh. So that was one thing that I was interested with uh, with this particular image as well. Um, let's go back here. So these were others that were from the greenhouse in uh, Normal, Illinois. I worked with um, uh, Jessica Chambers, who's the director of the uh, of um, the horticultural gardens there at the university. And in all of these cases, what I had to do was contact everybody and arrange for the visit, particularly with, um, well, with all of them, arrange to explain to them what I wanted to do and arrange for the visit. And then um, I was able to go in accompanied by one of the gardeners and select what I wanted. And that way I, I came away with uh, quite a bit of, of uh, material to then um, take with me to, to utilize. Uh, so it was, it was a, a really nice type of relationship that you set up with the directors and with the gardeners who you met, uh, who I met at the time too. So it was a lot of fun actually meeting them and hearing about their experience uh, in the gardens and how long they had been there and worked there as well too. Um, so these are, these are some of the, under the category motifs from my current backyard. And this Euonymus allatus, the, the burning bush. At our house, we had, I say had, because they're, uh, we had to cut them down for uh, reasons of, um, they had some issues going on. Uh, but we had two beautiful specimens in our yard. And uh, before we got rid of them, I, I would collect uh, a bunch of the leaves. And it's, it's interesting with the, with the leaves too. It's like you can have them for a long time dry, but I found once I rehydrated um, them, they were like a piece of cloth again. And it, and it was very, they were very flexible and very malleable. In, in this process. Um, let's take a look. So these, these are, are, this first set was, I wanted to try to have, let's see, there we go, a set of leaves in my, my feeling about it was, let's see how many of these I can get that and, and how different they're gonna all look here. What, what's the diversity here of, of uh, all of these leaves on this bush or on, on this type of uh, tree or whatever. And what kind of impression is it going to give me? Um, so my feelings in terms of uh, how you see horticultural specimens uh, uh, displayed as well as uh, illustrated, I wanted to think about another way of documenting them. And again, having the plants document themselves through the use of this material that I was using. And I, I think they, they do a pretty good job. I think they, they sort of have a, a very interesting, unique sensibility to them, each one. And I find that some of the different plants do much more of an impression than others. Um, um, and also I like to use, uh, Stick tush is a good medium that I like to use with it. Um, printing, overprinting, uh, you get a certain type of density. I'm often asked about why do I use black ink a lot. Um, I think it gives me much more of a, of a uh, value range uh, that that shows up in the images, and some that are color. Again, I like to sort of do the um, a lot of overlapping uh, with them uh, and to get a kind of density as well as this particular print is on the, the gray, gray reeves uh, BF, uh, BF, no it's a uh, yeah gray reeves BF, bfk paper um, 
And let's go to, let's see. Let's take a look at this other. So the, the current images. So this was another set, uh, a suite of prints using the idea of what happens with the burning bush through the seasons and how it starts off really um, the green leaves are very, very interesting. And it's change by fall, you have this intense, brilliant red, very, very beautiful uh, kind of change in, in uh, striking color that takes place with this bush. I, I really like it. It's an invasive bush, its uh, origins are from China. And um, it's, it, these were some of the images that were in the exhibit in, um, in Beijing. Uh, it, that exhibition was in October and part of November. They're, they're gonna have another venue uh, at another museum. I have to find out where that museum is gonna be there in January as well. Um, but this involved a lot of overprinting. And um, to get the, this kind of density that I, that I really wanted um, was overprinting and also um, uh, changing the, the orientation of the, of the plate itself. Um, and it gave, I, I was really happy with the, the result of this. Uh, the paper became very, very heavy and very, very, uh, took on a uh, sort of different type of quality that I really liked as well. Here are some other images from, these were from, um, Ireland, the recent visit to Ireland. And what I wanted to do here with these is also have the, the, the name of them. On, on the, the plants itself as well. So soft shield fern. And what I'm trying to do with more of the uh, images is within that context of documentation um, to be for myself as well, become more familiar with the, the names of horticultural names of the plants as well too. And uh, with the continued work and presentations of them. Um, another, this particular image was a different approach because um, I usually use the uh, photopositive aluminum plates when I print them. And I wanted to use the stones that they had in uh, Dublin to, to produce uh, one of the prints with the same approach to the technique and see how it, how it would come out. I was pretty happy with it, but I think I wanna do some more explore, exploration with it using the stones as well. Um, the approach to the technique and how the plants reacted on the stone surface was quite satisfying. And the processing becomes totally different uh, as you all know, in terms of etching the stone and uh, getting it to, to actually getting to hold the quality of what you have there. Uh, and so that's, that's something that I wanna work more on with the stones too. This other, um, let's see. So this one, it's, um, it's a large burdock. This is, uh, these are leaves that are from my own backyard. We have a lot of burdock plants that are, they're really beautiful. Uh, the, their scale and uh, the little purple flowers that they get later in the season. And they're very, of course, very prickly as well. But these leaves, they, they did really, really, I was very, very excited to, to peel these off of the Artex film and to see the kind of information that was transferred to it. What I like to do with the backgrounds is I basically fill in with tush wash. So it gives 
uh, it becomes just some sort of an aesthetic sensibility of how I want that background and how I want then the specimens to sort of float within that background too. Um, and this was another one from, uh, this is another group of ferns that I collected in the greenhouses here at Cornell. And um, that was, um, there was a couple of some different ones. There's one called the foxtail fern that's that's in the in this section right in here. So again, these were on stones. Again, this was on a stone too. So that that's what I'm trying to work on more with with some of the images is working with the the stones along with the the plates as well. Uh, but I want to. Um, I have some stones at my studio here at, at home as well. I, I have to sometimes go over to school if I want to grain the stone, which is, which is nice to have that uh, possibility to do that. Uh, let's see. So that, I think I've gone through most of these, uh, the, the different images. What I'll bring up, let's go to this. So can everybody, can you see that? Okay. This is, um, these are slides from the um, time in 2013 at uh, Illinois State University. This is in the greenhouse. And so we, we were collecting plants and uh, this is uh, Jessica Chambers and uh, worked with a couple of other graduate students as well who work with normal editions too to help produce these prints. Um, and uh, these plants here, right here that you see are uh, elk, elk horn ferns that are very interesting. And uh, I was looking for other kinds of plants that, that I thought were, uh, there were fig leaves. And so this is what it looks like when I lay everything out on cardboard. So it's basically drying the leaves and drying the plants. Um, here's, this is Vita Reeves helping me um, take one of the plants, philodendron. And so this is that image, that one that you saw earlier. And the placement, I try to just sort of do a kind of placement in terms of how you might look at a, a traditional um, uh, horticulture illustration and thinking about looking at, in this case, the leaf. And in this case, I was then surrounding it with other leaves that were in the greenhouse within its uh, uh, different areas that it was uh, occupied by. So this is drying on the Artex film. This is Alyssa Tauber, who was one of the graduate students who was helping at the time. And then here I'm checking to see what it looks like. So we're beginning to take off the leaves here. This is uh, Richard Finch on the right. We're looking at the quality of what doing some test burns to make sure that we would get the proper burn for the plate. And this is uh, after it's exposed and then it gets rinsed. And here's what it looks like coming off the press there. And this is Chris. He was helping with the sponging. And rolling up there. This is one of the other ones. So some of these uh, other prints that are in the background here, these were some early prints that were actually produced at uh, Robert Blackburn Printmaking Workshop. And I was working with Phil Sanders at the time. Um, and this was before going to uh, going abroad to, to do anything. Uh, these plants were also collected here at home, either from my yard or from the botanic gardens. 
this small uh, uh, work here in the corner, it's uh, of a fern. And that was actually the very, very first one that I did. The shape that it's uh, occupied by, it's actually a shape of one of the, um, well, I got the stone from the stone quarry that's down the street from my house, basically. So that's, that's from uh, Illinois State. I'm gonna see if I can bring up another item. Okay, can you see that? that yeah. And I'll do the presenter view. Let me go back. All right, so these are images from, um, so we have the Royal Botanic Gardens in Edinburgh. Oh, excuse me, Greg, we're, we're not seeing that on, on the screen. You're not? Okay. No. Uh, let me see. Let me escape. Um, I think what I have to do is probably uh, go out here and do that. I'm going to stop sharing and then I'll open this up. Let's see if I can go back to share screen. Okay, can you see it now? Yes, yep, now we see it. Okay, and I'll do the presenter view here. All right, so thank you. So these are images from the Royal Botanic Gardens. This is one of the, this is the Fern House. And it, it was very, very intriguing inside there. Um, you had ferns from all over the world again. And ones that I chose, some of them were um, the, the very, very thick leaves that it took me a long time to get them to sort of press down as well. This is another view of it. Uh, here's other views of it. These are some of those very beautiful uh, sphagus hedges um, that they have there. This is gardens on the inside. It's another. A nice fountain and a little pond as you're entering. This was in the conservatory here. So this is one of the images of uh, one of the ferns that I was talking about. It's very, uh, uh, it was very difficult to press and to get a, a impression from it actually. There's some others there. This is rolling up in the shop. So this plate is what it looked like after I burned it. Um, again, it was a very large plate. And this is what it looks like coming off the press. And that's what it is. And this was the other one uh, that I showed earlier as well. And then here, these are the other ones that were from um, Ireland. And the others. Yeah. Yeah. So these are some books that I've produced also. Um, Maltese from my backyard, and these are some early prints. And what I did was actually took some of the prints themselves and um, they became the pages of the book. Um, and that's what I've been doing too lately is uh, more bookmaking since uh, retirement and trying to learn how to do leather binding, leather covers, which has been really interesting for me. Uh, ultimately, what I want to do is become very proficient with trying to do the, 
uh, tooling in the um, gold leafing and things as well. So all of this work is, again, from the, um, it started from that entire, uh, how do I get back to here? Whoops, no, I don't want that. Just click on this. I'll stop sharing. Okay, there we go. So uh, all, of, all of this started from those images that I showed with, um, uh, from Rome and from uh, Italy, uh, their trips there. Uh, I, I often like to think about um, where we get our ideas and, and then how those ideas develop over a long period of time, as well as me feeling I, I wanted to sort of take my time with, uh, with this investigation. And that's how I look at it as a, a, a total investigation and possible research. Um, that continues. I'm, I'm doing gardening. Uh, we, we did a lot of garden gardening last this past summer. Uh, and we got lots of goodies. Uh, and with the rain, the amount of rain that we had here this year, the plants were, were enormous. They were, I grew, grew um, we grew some collard greens that are still growing after being hit by at least three frosts already. And they're still really doing beautifully. Uh, we grew carrots, we grew uh, tomatoes, we grew uh, squash, we grew eggplants, uh, lettuce, all kinds of lettuce. Uh, the garlic was great. And uh, I just put in garlic in uh, October also for the coming year. Um, so I, we have perennial gardens that are around the house as well too that uh, we, we really like to keep up and keep everything going. The deer didn't bother the uh, hostas this year because we had plenty of fox running around and our neighbors behind us had two dogs that I think also helped keep them away as well. But we got to see our gardens look very different. Uh, a lot of times, a lot of years, uh, what would happen is the deer would completely decimate all of the hostas. And so you would not really see what they totally looked like. This year, it was, it was beautiful, it's really nice. But um, that's it. That's all I think I have to show you. So we have some time for some questions. We have some questions in the Q&A panel. OK. Um, if you like, I can read uh, the first one to you. Sure. That'd be great. Thank you. Uh, sure. Sten says, what is the process of overprinting? Um, what, what I'll do is I'll print a color and then in some cases what I have done is actually um, reverse the paper. It's, it's like uh, turn the paper and print it again on the same plate. With that particular image, the um, uh, Euonymus allatus, that was how, that, how I wanted to, to do that. Let me see if I can go back. Um, to show you. And so I kept building up the, um, the color in that manner uh, to, to develop that that way. Uh, let me share the screen again with you. Oops, I'm, I'm sorry. Let me get back here. Can open that up and then share. Can you see it? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay, so I, I'll go back to the uh, Euonymus Alatus print, the current images. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so each one of these, um, this was the first one. And then this one, I had actually two, two printings. And I kept printing for the next one. I would print uh, another plate. I think I had about three plates that I was using for this image. And I would maybe turn it, turn the, uh, the paper a different direction because I was trying to build density 
and that's that's what I uh, refer to as overprinting. Uh, Sam and, has another question. Oh, okay. sorry. Yeah. Uh, have you been able to decipher why you love using lithography? For example, you could be doing etching. What is what is it about lithography above other methods? I I like all of our mediums. And going through school, um, I think I had a very very wonderful education in printmaking in terms of uh, having to learn pretty well, I would say, how, how to do etching, lithography, relief, screen printing as well, and, and how to do something like, for example, stone engraving, um, which was an interesting process I learned from Harry Westland, uh, a tavern master printer. And um, I like the surface of the stone. Uh, I like the type of um, uh, physicality that you can uh, bring to it. Not that it's any particularly different from, let's say, how physical you can get with a copper plate or, or uh, etching plate as well. But I think I'm, I'm really attracted to the surface of the stone itself and the process of, uh, I, I like to talk, talk about it as almost being a, a magical um, uh, process uh, with the etching and you're really printing from a rock if you really think about it on another level. Here you have this rock that you that's that's giving you an image, and that can keep it. So all of that is what I've been always intrigued uh, uh, with the stones with. Now we have a question from Maggie Block. Mm -hmm. uh, she says, uh, "Would you talk a little about the relationship in your work and this work of yours between documentation and art?" Um. One of the things I would say is in various different uh, practices and studies, so horticulture has uh, horticultural uh, illustrations and horticultural uh, drawings, which is a form of documentation. Uh, and what, what I wanted was to think on that level, but to also do and think about that, how I achieved that documentation and how I, how I allow the plants to, to play a part in that documentation, opposed to just being there and me drawing uh, the, the plant. I feel like what I think about what I do is actually have them participate in it and have them participate in a much more physical way uh, than uh, otherwise. So, so that's, that's how I have the relationship to what I'm doing with documentation and my art. Um, and I think there's, you know, there's all kinds of, um, uh, well, taxonomy too, in terms of how uh, identification of a plant, fossils and how, uh, plants were identified through fossils, as well as other kinds of uh, entities uh, uh, from amoebas to fish to other kinds of things. Um, so that's, that's the relationship that, that I like about that. Um, thinking of things, how you draw, but also other ways how you can make an impression and how you think about that individually uh, of, of what took place there. Uh, so that's, that's one thing that I think about with all of this. Um, I, I, I often, well, another idea that I have is to document every uh, growing horticultural item that's in my yard from the tiniest piece of grass to uh, large pieces or blades of, of the, the uh, miscanthus grasses and other kinds of things like that. Do a whole series on that and a whole exhibit of, uh, you could say, well, this is, this is what I'm surrounded with. And this is in my sphere of, um, of uh, earth and the atmosphere that I exist in and what's there and how I can take care of it and how I can uh, have it as a su sustainable. 
uh, tons of diversity, biodiversity, which is one thing that the um, uh, Cornell Botanic Gardens is very interested in emphasizing in what, what's there in that space that they occupy too. So I hope that maybe helps with, with your question. Um, I guess they'll tell us in the q and if it helped. Um, we have about 10 more questions. Uh, Sarah Smelser asks or says, hi, Greg, it's nice to see you and your beautiful work. I love the burning bush print especially. I'm curious as a traveling printmaker myself, where you worked in Dublin and what that was like. I'm sorry I missed the first few minutes of your talk. You may have talked about that already. Hi, sir. It's good to, good to glad you came on. And um, I miss seeing Jonathan at the, at the print fair and everything too. So, but tell him hi. Um, well, what happened, uh, I, I did two trips to Ireland and one was sort of an exploratory trip. Me, uh, my wife and my daughter were in, and we were looking around and I wanted to go visit. So I visited Black Church and then I visited um, a couple of other print shops there too. I, I settled with Black Church because I felt more at home with Black Church in a sense, uh, that print shop. And uh, I contacted David McGinn, who's the director and mentioned to him that I was gonna come back. I would like to come back and actually to do uh, uh, work there in the shop. So I became a member. I, I, he asked me, well, what, we were talking about what would probably be a good way to do it. And um, I said, well, I, I wouldn't mind becoming a member. And I, I said, uh, he said, sure, it's fine. So I became a member. And I was able to then go back on the second trip and uh, schedule time in the shop. And it's, it's also a, a shop, it's a membership shop where everyone uh, helps to take care of it. Uh, they have uh, also a, a board and uh, director. Uh, David is, is the uh, director. And uh, Hazel is also, um, she's an administration uh, officer there. And they have, I think it's four floors in the building. It's right in the Temple Bar area. And it has these beautiful wooden columns uh, where the door is. The door is this beautiful wooden door and you can't miss it. And um, they have a floor for screen printing, a floor for intaglio and a separate floor for um, lithography. Uh, and uh, they also have um, space for digital as well. Uh, so I would say if you can uh, try to go visit and contact David and, and Hazel there and see you know, if you can uh, go and, and visit and go and perhaps uh, produce, a, produce some work there too. Okay, the next question is from Cynthia. Um, I wanna apologize, I may mispronounce this word. Um, can you talk about the touche and what it's made of? T-O-U-C-H-E. Um, yeah, the touche, it's like a, um, uh, it's lamp plaque, it's wax, and I think it has like some uh, preservatives in it. And um, it's actually, it's water soluble though. So um, we use distilled water and it will dissolve uh, over a little bit of time and you can, you can utilize it for drawing uh, material. And it's been used for, for years in, in lithography for, for that purpose. There are different types. There, there's the stick, which is like a, a it's a harder kind of, um, uh, looks, looks like a little candy bar in a wrapper. And then there's a paste tush that comes in a can, uh, which, which emulsifies, I think, much faster than the, the stick. Uh, yeah, too. And then different companies, Stones makes a wonderful one, Charbonnel makes another one, um, and William Corns uh, uh, graphics produ uh, products makes one as well. So ha uh, have you tried it? I wonder, have you tried it at all? Let's see if Cynthia answers. 
the next question is from Dean Betancourt. Um, how did you come to printmaking? Oh, um, I graduated, I, I'm from St. Louis originally. And after high school, I had a really great high school teacher who was trying to get all of our, her art students into different places for college. Um, she was sort of pointing me toward Kansas City Art Institute at that time. This was in uh, 1970 and when I graduated from high school. But um, I ended up staying in St. Louis and going to a junior college, um, Florissant Valley Community College. They had a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful art program. That's where I first learned how to do lithography in 1970 from uh, an artist, printmaker, painter, and he was my teacher in both printmaking and drawing and painting, a guy named George Bartko. I think George, uh, he's retired now and I think he lives in Maine, but he's from Hungary. He was very, um, he, he, I mentioned lithography as a kind of magical kind of uh, uh, medium. He treated it that way. And he treated the stone like a piece of paper. And I learned a lot. I did nothing but black and white for over two years, learning how to um, etch a stone, re-etch it, how to uh, deal with issues and problems, how to do wet washes, how to bring, bring things back to life, how to um, uh, do deletions, all kinds of deletions, both chemical, abrasive, and how to process that, how to stabilize it. And it was, it was a really great education. After I finished my associate's degree there, George took me, he took me over to Southern Illinois University to introduce me to Jim Butler and Robert Malone, who taught printmaking uh, at Il uh, University of Southern Illinois University in Edwardsville, Illinois. And so that's where I finished my BA there. And at the same time while I was there, I was concentrating uh, again in more printmaking specifically, let's say lithography, but I was also doing the other mediums too. And I, that's where I got the opportunity to work at Landfall Press in Chicago, uh, Illinois at the time. I think Landfall, I think Jack is in Santa Fe right now, but there, there was another opportunity to learn a lot, an incredible amount um, there. The first, I think the first day I was there, Chuck Close was there in uh, Klaus Oldenburg. Um, and so it's, it was, uh, I was a printer's assistant. I got 15 credit hours, I got paid and I got printer's proofs. So, and that was, I, I went there uh, my senior year, uh, finishing up my BA. After that, um, Jim Butler and Robert Malone, they encouraged me to uh, apply to graduate school, so I did. And I got into the University of Wisconsin, Madison, where I worked with uh, Jack Damer, Warrington Cole Scott, uh, Bill Weege, um, uh, Phil Hamilton, and he was doing book arts. And that experience was again, one that furthered my um, understanding of the process and helped me to really hone in on myself as an, as an artist in graduate school and continue to learn more about uh, the process. When I graduated, I uh, got a one-year sabbatic replacement job at the University of Minnesota in Morris, Minnesota, 150 miles northwest of Minneapolis. There I taught drawing, painting, and printmaking, and I set up a lithography shop for them there. After that, I went to, uh, I moved back to, I, uh, I moved to Minneapolis. Uh, that's where my wife was, and she was um, working on her PhD in sociology at the University of Minneapolis, Minnesota. And I started working for Vermilion Editions there with Stephen Anderson, who had worked with Titania Grossman at ULA. And uh, we did a lot of prints for a lot of different artists there. Yeah, that was a, a really wonderful uh, and exciting time to be there too. And I decided I wanted to look for more teaching jobs and um, 1980, I got the job at Cornell and I've been there since retirement. So that's a quick background of what, what happened to me in, in learning about printmaking and sort of meeting some, ex, in some godsends, I'll, I'll say, I always say, very kind people and helpful teachers uh, along the way.
and it's I think it's I, I hoped I've been a good teacher through my um, time and in, in teaching students as well because um, I feel like I really people were very very um, guiding and very very helpful throughout life that way. Okay. Next question here is from Ruth Moskovich. Uh, before you got into plants, what was your subject matter? Um, I, I, I called it familiar objects, uh, still lifes and things that were around me, uh, inanimate objects, mostly uh, still lifes and, and that kind of work. Uh, did a lot of drawing, um, large scale drawings and um, uh, I liked people like William Bailey, uh, artist. Uh, uh, Chardin was a, was one of my uh, uh, very uh, you know favorites in, in painting. Um, the the whole neoclassical period as well. Um, so that was that was what I was doing a lot. I still like to do lots of drawing as well and sketches. We have a question from Karen Friedman. She says, hi, hi Greg, Karen. so great to see your work and thanks so much for sharing your work and process. Question, once you coat the plants in tush, do you use just press, do you use just press them onto the Artec film with your hands or do you run it through the press? Neither. Oh. When, when they're soaked and they absorb the tush, they they become like a a towel a wet towel and i can lay them right on the artex and i'll i'll push them down a little bit but in the drying process it's what, what is what do you call it a cap, capillary action or something but but they seem to pull themselves to the the artex film on their own in the drying process so much so that sometimes I have difficulty getting the, the plant material off of it. Most of the times it, it just will, will peel right off, but sometimes I have to sort of help it to, to pick it out. But it seems to just do it on its own. And it takes a while to dry. Uh, I've, I've found myself having to really be patient. Sometimes I get you know really sort of antsy about it. I wanna see what this impression looks like of this thing, but I let it try to let it dry really, really well uh, before I take it off. And sometimes the plants will peel off themselves. They will just peel back um, from the artex itself, leaving the impression too. Um, and it depends what side you use. What I found the, the plant of the burdocks, the side that the stem is on, stems are, are more predominant that side did very, very well for to produce uh, that, that impression. Um, and also the, the so, so this is where the sort of exploration too is just finding out how different leaves function, how different plants leaves will function too with it. So, but give it a try, see, see what you think. And Karen said that she meant to say soap not coat, but um, <laughs> the next question is from Jay Judge. Uh, the book formats look very exciting. The fragmentary nature takes on a monumentality, would make one want to explore the pages for the discovery of each discrete environment. Could you explain your use of the book format? Um, what, I wanted to do with the book format is to um, have these prints be presented in a different experience. Um, and the, the one that I showed you, it, it was a, um, uh, It's, it's, a, it's a book that's composed of a lot of early prints. And so I was constructing that uh, editing and curating what I wanted to appear 
in the order in the sequence that I wanted those, uh, those plants to appear in it. Um, so it's, it's another journey with the plants, but also in that book form. And that's one of the, uh, the case bound structure is one that I really like. Uh, I've done other books where the pages are more of a folio and some where the pages are, are a folio that's then able to be unfurled into a larger uh, page as well. So thinking of different ways that, uh, that I can use the, the plant again to, to uh, integrate into that book form and, and try to really get it to, to uh, function as almost a, a, a mysterious journey with, with the plants. Uh, or even one could say a development journey of how we might think of even how a plant grows or how a plant kind of um, uh, over time uh, with the Ioannima salatus is what happens over time with uh, an, uh, a plant in that, in that case. If, if I show you something on the screen, will, will you be able to see it, Robin? If, I... um, if, if, you, if you share your screen again, sure. But, but if I... Can, can they okay, see? Oh, you just, if you just want to hold it up. Yeah, yeah. yeah we should be able to oh, see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, sure. wait a minute. Let me, let me show you something here. Okay, so this is another book. And this is the one, the Yuanma Salatus in the book form. Mm -hmm. and, and what I did with it too, it was the same thing. Wow. And so I, I took the, the pages and this little flap, I wanted to keep it there and use it as like a, a notation kind of flap. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's how it does. And so this is where, and this is more, more detailed here too. Um, and the beginning of here, in the beginning of it, it's like here, and then this actually, this actually opens up to another page mm -hmm. with the text and things. And I did this on my printer at home here. And this, the paper was, um, it was a piece of beautiful handmade paper that one of my colleagues gave me and I hadn't used it for a long time. And, I finally, this, I wanted to use it for this, this book. But this is, this is where, what I'm getting at with that. I'm, I'm working on some more right now too. Um, and thinking about the structure of the book, whether it's, I'm using a Coptic binding for it and how I want the pages to work as well as with the images uh, to sort of maybe what, tell another kind of story uh, of a plant. So I'm always thinking of, of how, how I can do that with it. Um, and, and the use of the plant and the subject matters. Okay, we have a question here from John N.S. Says here, thank you for this gorgeous and fascinating presentation. The path from natural form through architectural motif to prints and books is so rewarding to see. What are you thinking of for future projects? And he says, thanks again, John. Well, um... I'll tell you one that I'm working on right now is um, in the, in the um, observation in the yard, you, you see how you have, uh, we have a lot of wildlife. Uh, like I said, we had fox, we had beautiful kits in the, in the yard, just playing with each other all summer. And, uh, and of course, squirrels. So the squirrels are always scurrying around, uh, burying things and, remembering where they are. So I'm doing a, a I'm working on a book right now of um, uh, that aspect of the, the nuts that the squirrels are, are interested in and uh, using the nuts themselves as a, um, as a matrix, as a print matrix and to, to uh, produce an image from. The images are coming out almost, they almost are taking on a quality of, of um, 
something from a medical x-ray or something because uh, I'm, I'm relief rolling them and then hand pressing them to produce an image with. But I can show you one so I see what it looks like. So this is what it looks like. And, and then I'll have text with it as well. Um, so these are all nuts that, that I found in my yard. It's, they're all the same kind. And the insides actually look very, very different uh, when you ink them. Uh, so, so that's another part, that's one of the other projects that I'm working on. Um, I'm also oh, oh, working on more projects dealing with the ferns. Uh, and I want to actually do a, a very, very nice book on, on ferns. So they, they are one of my favorites. And I want to really um, pull more information together with it and then put a, a very beautiful book together uh, with it as well. Maggie Block says, thank you, Greg. You're welcome, um, we thank you. The next question from Lynn Letterman. Uh, I can say I learned a lot from you from your CAU week-long workshop years ago. Yeah, hi, Will your method work on pronto plates rather than photosensitive alum aluminum plates? Pronto? Hey, what was the question again? Oh, yeah. It says, would your method work on pronto plates rather than photosensitive aluminum plates? Um, I... I think it would, you'd have to do some tests. You'd have to do some tests with it. Um, uh, the, the pronto plates that I've used, and I, uh, Keith Howard, I went to, um, when those plates first started coming out, Grand Prairie, the school that he was uh, teaching at, uh, I attended a workshop with him and George Benson was the uh, lithographer's name who was one of the early people using pronto plates. Um, and they were, at the time they were doing things with um, floor polish uh, from ballpoint pens and all kinds of things. Um, and uh, it took some tests. It took lots of tests because of how the material you're using uh, will stay on the plate and whether it will last through uh, how much printing it will last. But what I found is uh, the tush wash, because it does have a waxy sensibility to it, it would probably stay on the plate uh, quite a bit, uh, really well. And whatever you would process the non-image area with would probably suffice enough to, to not take ink um, as much. But I would say you'd have to test it. And then we have hope you, one last hope question. Hope you will. <laughs> one last question. Uh, how has the world, from at, this is from Abigail, how has the world and the world events around you made an impact on your subject matter? Um, I think <clears throat> I, I um, how can I answer this? It's, it's heightened. Uh, uh, given me a more heightened awareness of the importance of, let's say, sustainability, um, as well as um, uh, the, the planet in general, as well as a more heightened awareness of, of uh, biodiversity as well, and trying to protect that and trying to uh, help it. Um, my work, I think uh, I, I wanted to pl play a part in showing aspects of that uh, and helping to take care of it. Um, so uh, the, the, that's what I, I've come from in terms of with, with the, the, the world events and including with uh, the COVID and everything else. I, I hope everybody's taking care of themselves and trying to do the best you can to stay safe and stay loving to one another and kind to one another too and, and helpful if you can. Um, 